My name is Diego Gomez. My name is Joshua Alvarez. We're undergraduate researchers in Dr. Jayasin's biophysics lab. Our project centers around CSGP. It is a chaperone protein found in E. coli, Salmonella type of Miriam, and other gram-negative bacteria. Our presentation is specifically going to focus on potential purification methods of CSGE. It's also going to provide an overview of the curly biogenesis process and where we want to take this project moving forward. So we start off by characterizing amyloid proteins. They're characterized as misfolded or miscleaved proteins that have a propensity to aggregate with each other. And this is only possible due to the entirely beta sheet structure of these proteins, which makes it very easy for them to stack on top of each other and form non-covalent bonds. And it is the strength of these bonds that protects them from degradation from outside sources. And it is the deposition of these, uh, of these amyloid proteins in sensitive tissues or cells that is the main cause of many human illnesses, such as Alzheimer's, as we mentioned over here, but also E. coli sepsis being one of them. Now, what is the purpose of what I just told you? Well, the purpose is that these in E. coli are known as curly proteins, and they are known as also known as functional amyloid proteins and they are involved in the aggregation and cell adhesion to surfaces as well as to each other, which then mediates the formation of the biofilm, which is a slimy extracellular matrix that allows for interactions between the bacteria and the environment as well as with the host. And this is typically regarded as the first step of pathogenesis, which is the formation of disease within an organism. So the way that we went about this was that we transformed uh, regular E. coli and salmonella cells using a CSGE plasmid and then from there we plated them and we expressed them in Lemmix broth. We then spun it down and got it isolated a cell pellet and then we lysed this uh, cell pellet, followed it up with the dot plot which tracks where the protein is basically whether it's in the pellet or the supernatant. And then we purified this on a cobalt or nickel column and we found that a nickel column is typically the most successful one. So here was the troubleshooting process here. We used beeper only. Now beeper is a detergent that we use to break down the cell wall of the bacteria. And here, this is the pellet. And then this is the supernatant. Now, as you can see, well, probably not be able to see, but the pellet right here, the fact that it's this dark indicates that the protein is here. The supernatant has basically nothing in it indicating that the protein is not there, which is unusual given how our protein is typically a periplasmic protein. So then we tried different things. Like we put it in the wash buffer, which is a phosphate buffer to see if it would yield any different results. But as you can see, the supernatant over here is still very clear and the cell pellet is still very dark. We tried guanidinium, thinking that a denaturing agent would be enough to do the job, but we had the same problem here. Nothing in the supernatant and all in the cell pellet. And we even got a false positive with guanidinium at a time where the uh, cell pellet showed dark and so did the supernatant, but when we actually ran the test, we ended up with this, which is this right here, this first peak that you see right here, is gonna be all the junk protein that gets eluded. And then right here is our target protein, but as you can see, there is a very, just a very small hill, whereas we wanna see a big spike up in the, uh, in the graph. And the most recent developments that we have is that there is now protein throughout all the stages of the purification process. So in the pellet, in the buffer flow through, and the no all that we use to uh, get rid of all the junk protein, and then even in like the middle imidazole and the elution buffer for our target protein, we're getting protein across the board, indicating that we have at least taken some out of the cell pellet and now have enough to move forward with the project. So here's our most recent graph. As you can see, here's the big peak right here that you see for the, uh, the junk protein. And now you start seeing that little spike up that I was talking about. Instead of seeing a little hill, it's like a nice little, almost looking like a hypodermic needle, just boop, sticking out, indicating that we have at least isolated some protein in the, uh, the flow through. So where are we going with this? The hypothesis that, I'm, that we're trying to get across to you guys is that understanding the biophysical characteristics involved in curly biogenesis gives insight into toxic amyloid buildup and related diseases. Um, we understand amyloids to be these partially or misfolded conformers that then oligomerize into annular aggregates or protofibrils, then turn into amyloid fibrils, and then turn into amyloid plaques. These are the things that physically hamper uh, epi uh, epithelial tissues like uh, in neurons and within the intestines or within the head region of any animal. So a quick curly biogenesis overview. This is a gram-negative bacterium. When the gram-negative bacteria under undergoes some sort of stressor, whether it's pH or antibiotics or any like thing like proteases, um, the CSGD is phosphorylated off the inner membrane. This causes an upregulation in the SEC protein. CSGA, B, G, F, and E are all upregulated. Uh, we're only going to focus on CSGA and E and also B as well. Here's the main structure of the proteins for the actual amyloid fibril. 
A and B proteins are the same. They consist of this strand, loop strand, and the sensing 22 amino acid region, and they're stabilized by these polar uh, amino acid side chains, and, it gives it, and this gives it its uh, characteristic robustness and the uh, ability to protect against uh, outside stressors. And this is the protein that we're trying to characterize. This is a CSGE chaperone protein. Um, the work that we're trying to do is really trying to characterize these regions right here with the protein because these are the regions that sense this 22 amino acid uh, sensing region and uh, solubilize the proteins within the periplasm, allowing the organism to live without any toxic amyloid buildup that would uh, happen without these uh, proteins. So here's a quick overview of what it looks like when we have um, a wild type mutant, and here's a close up of what an amyloid fibril is. Um, curly have two purposes. So they provide a flexibility to biofilms, and they also act as a media in which that other uh, mutated or weakened bacteria share proteins in case there's a mutant like this so that they can actually share like CSGA, CSGB, CSGE proteins that this mutant may be lacking in, thus uh, compensating for this issue. So the significance of the research area is that um, going forward, we are trying to understand how these proteins interact with each other and more specifically how they interact with other um, amyloid proteins, one being uh, human IAPP, uh, human islet polypeptide uh, protein, um, and they share the same characteristics of the strand, loop strand, and this uh, causes a phenomenon known as uh, cross-seeding. And so the same CSGA protein, the strand, loop strand, will find its way into one of these proteins and cause a protofibril and then a aggregation of this specific protein. We see there are two instances, at least two studies, well, there are more studies that have been done where they have fed uh, organisms, in this case it's mice or rats, and this one's to C. elegans, a type of nematode, and we see an infection, well no infection in the intestinal epithelia, and then as we see in the neocortex, hippocampus, and stratum, that there is a, within the uh, wild type, we see this crazy uh, aggregation of amyloid proteins within the head region, and it's also seen here not too well, but in the head region, these foci start to uh, accumulate within the head region of the nematode, causing uh, no real issue to quality of life, but we understand that Alzheimer's is a very, or those types of diseases relating to amyloids are holistic diseases, and that amyloids may be a uh, factor in the over-contribution to this disease. So some quick takeaways, amyloid proteins have high propensity to aggregate together to form insoluble aggregates, currently a functional amyloid protein that are essential to the survival of E. coli and salmonella. Confirmation of CSG has been unsuccessful thus far, but there has been uh, progress in purification, curly proteins interact with each other, and with other prion behaving amyloids like human IPP, AS, and tau, and curly biogenesis is a highly structured and regulated process of amyloid proteins uh, that can be learned from. Thank you for your time, and we'd like to give you some quick acknowledgements. Uh, Cal State San Marcos, Dr. Dyson in the J Lab, Dr. Armenta, Dr. Trujillo, Dr. Garcia, and everyone working at the Otros office, we would like to thank you for your opportunity for this. Thank you thank for your you. time.